The Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. So I'm going to tell you a story. Five years ago, British politician Boris Johnson, who's now the mayor of London, was sitting on a British Airways flight on the way to India next to his two children. And the stewardess comes up to him and tells him, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to move. And so he's confused. He asks her why. And she tells him that we have very strict policies. And so when he asks what those policies are, she tells him simply men can't sit next to children. And so uh, his children speak up and they say, oh, but he's our father. And the stewardess apologizes because she thought they weren't his kids. Because it was later revealed that British Airways had a policy that adult men could not sit next to unaccompanied children. So Boris Johnson was labeled as a child predator just by virtue of being male. British Airways doesn't have this policy anymore, but Qantas, Air New Zealand, and Virgin Australia still openly admit to having it. Gender inequality is an issue that not only affects women. Nowadays, in our Western society, men are discriminated against in serious and often unexpected ways. And today, I'm going to give you four areas in which this discrimination is particularly shocking. Domestic violence, rape, false rape accusations, and criminal sentences. <clears throat> so when we think about domestic violence, usually we think of a man hitting a woman. Well, this might not be entirely true. See, the Family Violence Research Survey in the US found that women commit domestic violence just as frequently and just as strongly than men do. And as incredible as it may seem, over the past 30 years, violence by men has actually decreased. Whilst the use of severe violence, which means by the use of weapons or other dangerous items by women, is actually increased. And so the statistics and findings are there. Yet, how come we as a society still refuse to acknowledge that? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we can't see men as victims in our society. Imagine this scenario. You head into the mall and you see a young couple walking, and suddenly the girl turns around and slaps her boyfriend. And he sort of rubs his cheek, kind of shrugs it off, Nobody really thinks any of it. But what if the opposite were true? What if he had hit her? Would people's reactions have been any different? Would people have rushed in to help her? Would people have tried to forcibly restrain him? It's this mentality that we can't see men as victims that is so harmful to male victims of domestic violence, who frankly are just as common as female victims. And this mentality is particularly harmful when we talk about court cases, because cases in which the man is the victim in domestic violence are not taken as seriously. And so women who commit domestic violence are not convicted nearly as much as men who do. And this is because when the law was designed, it was designed to protect women, because we saw domestic violence as a crime that only affected women. But nowadays, society has changed. And men are just as likely to be abused in a relationship, whether it's homosexual or heterosexual. And our laws need to protect everybody. There is no reason that we should treat victims of domestic violence any differently, whether they're men or women. And there is also no reason that we should treat abusers, perpetrators of domestic violence, any differently based on their gender, especially in court. All perpetrators need, of domestic violence need to be prosecuted and convicted by the law equally. And so a similar situation happens when we talk about rape. See, male victims of rape simply aren't believed. And our laws operate under the assumption that only men can rape. See, the actual law in the United Kingdom reads this. A person A commits an offense if he intentionally penetrates the vagina, anus, or mouth of another person B. B does not consent to the penetration, and A does not reasonably believe that B consents. Now, this law does not give any room for women to be rapists as well. And so you must understand that when men are raped, the law simply can't protect them. And just to give you an idea on how badly these laws are written, in California, when a 15-year-old boy was a victim of statutory rape by an adult woman, and she got pregnant and gave birth, he was actually forced to pay child support to his rapist when he turned 18. 
And so by now you may be thinking, okay, well, men are not protected as much as women when it comes to rape, but obviously there are not as many female, male victims as there are female victims. Well, the CDC, which is the U.S. Center for Disease Control, uh, conducted an intimate partner and sexual violence survey. And in it, it found that in the year 2010, an estimate of 1,270,000 women would be raped. Now, when we look at the statistic for men, it's simply non-existent. They just put a little asterisk there. When we look into another category, which is when men are forced to penetrate, which means to me that they were forced to have sex with somebody else, and when we look at that, we find that 1,267,000 men would be estimated to be raped, frankly, in my opinion, in the year 2010. So men can be raped just as much as women. Just that we, as a society, have decided not to call it rape. And when males are raped, their experiences are just downplayed. People don't believe them. And so when a 19-year-old man was sexually assaulted in Toronto uh, last year by four women, and the story made the major news, people had these reactions over Twitter. People thought it was funny. They said, this is a joke, right? Or, that's hilarious. Or, people thought he was lucky. They said, lucky bastard. Or, I don't see why he should complain. Or then again, people thought it was impossible because he was a man. They said, why is this an issue? Or, how is that even possible? When you're a man and you're a victim of rape, there really is nowhere to go and nobody to tell because nobody's going to believe you. And operating under this assumption that only men can be rapists and that only women are the victims brings another problem, which is false rape accusations. See, because the law is specifically designed to protect the victim, which we as a society assume is the female, and prosecute the rapist or the perpetrator, which we assume is the man, it, this means that women are generally protected in court, and some women can use this to their advantage, using rape accusations. S some women use false rape accusations for various reasons. A woman wants to use her child to file a false accusation of rape in order to get the upper hand in a divorce case. Other women use it to get the man to pay child support, or target wealthy men in order to get private settlements. But there's always been false accusations, really, for every crime. The problem, though, in this case, is that the accuser is almost always immediately believed. And so for when you're a man and you're you've been accused of rape, it is no longer a question of innocent until proven guilty, but rather guilty until proven innocent. And when men are accused of rape, even if they're not convicted, society will still ostracize them. See, in June of 2009, a man named Stephen Lyne was wrongly accused of rape by a teenage girl. And she admitted to lying about this in open court. She did not receive any sort of punishment. But the worst part, though, is that Stephen Lyne was actually stabbed to death by another man who was angry at his supposed actions, which we now know were not true. And so, a a false accusation of rape can really have the potential to ruin somebody's life. And accusers, false accusers, they don't receive any punishment. There are no repercussions for false accusers. And this is how men are discriminated against in these courts. And that's what I call gender inequality. And when we think about criminal sentences, well, usually we think that men or women are judged more harshly than men because we live in a male-dominated society. Well, this is actually not true. See, did you know, sir, what's your name? Rajiv. Rajiv. Did you know that if you were going to commit a crime tomorrow, hypothetically speaking, don't do that, but if you're going to commit a crime tomorrow, did you know that you would get a significantly longer prison sentence than if she were to commit the exact same crime? See, from this study gathering evidence on the U.S. federal courts, we can see that men get longer prison sentences than women. In fact, the average sentence length for men is 51 months, while it is 18 and a half months for women. Granted, the offense level is higher for men, meaning that the crimes that men commit on average are more severe than those of women. But we can clearly see that the ratio of severity to sentence length is not equal to that of women. In fact, it is quite double that of women. There is no reason that we should 
give sentence lengths that are different for men or for women. So in conclusion, men are victims of gender inequality because one, they suffer equally from domestic violence but yet receive no support whatsoever. Two, they can be the victims of rape. And while male rape victims are not as common as female victims, it does not mean their experience was any less horrible. What's more, their experience is downplayed and trivialized. Three, just like with domestic violence, there are no shelters for men. There's nowhere men can go to seek protection. Four, men can be falsely accused of rape, have their lives publicly ruined, and the accuser will face no punishment. And five, they receive significantly longer prison sentences for the same crimes. So what can we do about these issues? Well, the first step is to raise awareness. Even talking about it over dinner with your family will achieve something. Because we can't keep living in a world where we think that all men have it better off, because we don't. And that is out of the box. Once we step out of the idea that gender inequality only affects women, we can achieve change. And change only lies within us, the youth. It is us who are going to make up the society we live in in 20 years. And once we start thinking and acting as we should, treating both men and women equally, we can achieve true gender equality. Because in my grandfather's time, we used to see the world like this, where men were sort of higher than women or had more rights. And so we realized we were living in this male-dominated society. We made laws to change it. But because we saw the world as men strong and women as weak, we made laws that specifically made women stronger in order to arrive at a situation like this, where women and men are equal. But I find nowadays that in these areas that I've talked about, in domestic violence, in rape, and criminal sentences, we've arrived at a situation that looks more like this, where women sort of have more rights than men. And so how do we fix this? Well, we need laws that protect both men and women equally. And a suggestion is to take gender completely out of laws. Once we make laws gender neutral, we can achieve true gender equality. And that's the most important thing I can ask you to do. We can start now. We can start by discussing these issues because they exist and they are serious. And more importantly, this that I've described to you is not fair. And the principles that I grew up with, I can't accept unfairness. And neither should you. Because as a new generation, we are the only ones that can make true gender equality a reality. Thank you very much.